right, hello. Uh, thank you, David. My name's Emily. I come to you from the Chrome security team. I lead a team there that works on TLS, HTTPS adoption, certificates, cryptography, basically all things HTTPS and TLS. Uh, before I begin, I want to preemptively thank many, many uh, former and current teammates who helped me with this talk. Uh, too many to name explicitly, but I really appreciate all the ideas that various coworkers and colleagues contributed. Um, this is really not a talk involving many of my own ideas. This is really just kind of a list of all the absurd and horrible things that I have learned as I have come to work in this area more closely over the last couple years. So today we're talking about the Web PKI. This is the system that underlies all secure connections on the web. It allows web browsers to establish encrypted and authenticated connections to websites. If you compromise this system, you can impersonate any website. You can uh, spy on people's account credentials, read their private messages, tamper with their private documents. You can infiltrate critical infrastructure or intercept corporate, corporate secrets, or really just disrupt society in many, many, many ways. So given that we rely in our society on this system to be functional and secure, if you asked me what, what words I think of to describe it, you might hope that I would say words like sophisticated, streamlined, modern, and secure. But of course, instead, the words that I think of are words like legacy, overcomplicated, rickety, ancient, and dumpster fire. And uh, I'm going to be telling you today about why these are the words that come to mind instead of those nicer words that I said a second ago, and how we can think about starting to put out the dumpster fire. So I've used this term, the web PKI, and you might or might not be familiar with that term, but you're probably familiar with the concept of an HTTPS certificate. So when you go to set up a website at example.com, you get a certificate from a trusted certification authority, or CA, that proves that you do indeed control the real example.com. Then when a client, such as a web browser, goes to establish an HTTPS connection, you provide the certificate and the client tries to validate it. The client maintains this list of trusted CAs locally, sometimes called a trust store or a root store. And it's governed by a set of policies and procedures called a trust store program or a root program that decide which CAs are trusted by that client to establish HTTPS connections. So when the client receives this example.com certificate, it tries to build a chain from that certificate to a root in its trust store. And if it can build that chain successfully, it accepts the certificate, and if not, it rejects it. And this overall system of trusted CAs that issue certificates directly or indirectly to websites is called the Web PKI, the public key infrastructure that we use on the web to authenticate websites. The Web PKI was designed in an era when encryption was pretty rare. It was used for high value, well-resourced websites. Not the web that we have today, where encryption is the norm. Virtually all traffic on the web is encrypted today. This growth in HTTPS adoption is a great thing, and the Web PKI needs to change along with it. It's no longer an edge case. It needs to be secure and reliable and usable enough to underlie the entire web. So today I'm going to be telling you about some of the ways that the Web PKI needs to change to adapt to this ubiquitously encrypted world, and how we're kind of pulling it into the present and the future. I'm going to be telling you about three ways that the Web PKI falls short and how we can think about overcoming these. First, I'll talk about moving from a glacially evolving system to a more agile one. Then about some of the security shortcomings in the Web PKI and how we can rectify them. And finally, about simplifying some overcomplicated legacy baggage. If we want to be able to improve the Web PKI, we need to be able to change things. We need to be able to get rid of CAs that we no longer believe to be trustworthy. And we need to be able to do that without breaking too many websites that might be using certificates issued by those CAs. We need to be able to introduce new security requirements and phase out old ones. And we need to be able to deploy new types of cryptography, like algorithms that are secure against quantum computers, as we heard about earlier today. 
Unfortunately, historically, this is a system that moves very slowly. Slowness has infiltrated at many, many levels of the web PKI, and I'll give you, I'll give you a couple examples. First of all, these root certificates that clients trust, the root CA certificates, those are typically valid for decades, if clients even enforce expiration on them at all. On a related note, historically, many clients in the web PKI have slow or unreliable or completely non-existent update channels for their trust stores. So taken together, this means that when a root certificate is out there, it's out there. It can be very, very slow to remove an old root certificate and distribute its replacement. It can even be as slow as years just waiting for older devices to fall out of the market. Fortunately, over time, some of the sources of slowness in the system are being eroded. The system's starting to move faster, and this is one of the areas where it is. Increasingly, modern clients come with dynamic, reliable update channels for their trust stores. And root programs are starting to introduce the idea of term limits on the root CA certificates that they include in their programs, meaning that after five, 10 years, the certificate automatically gets removed and needs to be replaced by a new CA. So together, this means that we are training the ecosystem into being more agile with respect to roots. Once a root is out there, it can be removed more quickly and new ones can be distributed more quickly. Another source of slowness in the web PKI is the individual server certificates. The maximum lifetime of server certificates has been coming down over time in the past few years, thanks to some heroic cross-industry efforts, and it's now capped at 13 months. But that's still kind of a long time. If you have a 13-month certificate, there's not that much incentive for a server administrator to have a very well-oiled, well-exercised practice process for replacing that certificate, either because it's about to expire, like in three hours and the server administrator just noticed, or maybe the certificate needs to be replaced quickly for some other reason, like the CA that issued it is distrusted and the administrator needs to get a new certificate from a new CA. With a 13-month validity, replacing a certificate still tends to be a manual process and often not a very quick one. Okay, so um, underlining, underlining this point that certificate issuance is not designed to be as fast as we need it to be, it's still technically possible, allowable for a CA to issue a certificate when they're validating the domain name to issue that certificate to do that validation via snail mail. So this doesn't happen that often in practice to my knowledge, but it just goes to show that the system is not designed to be as fast as we need it to be. What we need is for certificate issuance and renewal to be automated. This is not a novel concept. Many hardworking people, maybe some of the people in this room, have worked over the past few years to design and pretty widely deploy a protocol called ACME, Automated Certificate Management Environment. And it had a number of predecessor protocols also. And what these protocols let you do is have a server and a CA coordinate automatically to issue a certificate, renew it when it's about to expire, and eventually maybe even renew it when needed for other reasons as well. Just to give a little more detail about what this means, it means that instead of having a human administrator set a calendar reminder to renew a certificate every year, which kicks off this manual certificate request and verification and installation process, instead, there's a little bit of software running on the server that talks to the CA and does all of this certificate issuance and renewal automatically. Automated certificate issuance means that certificate lifetimes can be shorter, new security requirements can be rolled out more quickly, and eventually we can even teach servers to do smarter things, like maybe automatically fail over among different CAs if one isn't responsive. So it's an improvement for robustness and reliability also. Automated certificate issuance is really almost a holy grail for the web PKI. It's what I would ask if I could ask a genie for one thing, just automate all certificate issuance and renewal on the web. However, it is a heavy adoption effort. It requires adoption effort from both servers and CAs. So uh, that's a lot of coordination and deossification needed, and it is a pretty heavy lift. But there is no doubt in my mind that automating certificate issuance is the way to a more agile web PKI. At the beginning of the talk, 
I alluded to this list of trusted CAs that clients put in their trust store that are the roots of trust for HTTPS connections. I now want to look at this attack surface a little bit more closely. Somewhat distressingly, clients typically trust not a few, but dozens or even hundreds of organizations to issue certificates. This screenshot is showing just the beginning, just the A's and B's of the CAs that are trusted by default on my Mac laptop. And I want to emphasize that if a single one of these organizations is compromised, they can issue certificates for any website. So this is a pretty big attack surface. And a very reasonable question you might ask is, why do we trust these organizations? By what process do we deem them trustworthy? Then you might be tempted to wave your hands and say, well, we audit them. And it's true, CAs are audited regularly. However, when you think of audits, you might think of some sort of very diligent technical operation where a very skilled auditor is looking really hard for flaws in the CA's operations. And that's not usually what CA audits look like. In fact, it turns out that CA audits are not actually a particularly rich source of information for root programs looking to make trust decisions. There are a variety of reasons for this. One is that the CA chooses their own auditor. So it's not necessarily in the CA's interest to choose the most skilled or, or diligent auditor. And I also want to mention that when I say auditor, auditing firms, you might be thinking of like a pen test shop. You might be thinking of a security shop. That's not what we're talking about here. These are more like financial auditing firms. So not always the most technically skilled organizations. Then the output from the audit is not usually a long detailed list of findings. It's usually something more like a few pages, mostly a lot of boilerplate saying that everything is fine. And finally, the audit quality varies pretty dramatically. It's not unusual to have uncovered major, major security flaws in a CA's operations that weren't touched by audits at all. So as much as we'd like to be able to assess CA trustworthiness completely ahead of time, it's not really possible to do so fully. And if we can't assess trustworthiness completely ahead of time, the next best thing is to monitor as we go. So along these lines, a big recent improvement to the certificate ecosystem that you may have heard about is certificate transparency, or CT, which is basically a transparency layer bolted on top of the web PKI that requires that all certificates be published in public logs in a cryptographically verifiable way. This has been a big improvement for the certificate ecosystem, not just because it allows domain owners to sort of directly discover the certificates that are issued for their domains, which could include malicious or unauthorized certificates. It also allows researchers and root program owners to sort of monitor holistically and discover suboptimal patterns of certificate issuance and catalyze improvements in there, for example, in their policies. So certificate transparency doesn't prevent bad behavior, but it allows us to discover and rectify it, often in systematic ways. And by the way, when we're talking about the security of the web PKI, it's not just the trustworthiness of the CAs that we have to worry about. Let's, let's think about what is a CA's fundamental job if it is behaving perfectly honestly, not compromised, not malicious, behaving perfectly according as specified. Its fundamental job is to receive a certificate request and validate control of the domain name associated with that request, and then issue the certificate. Typically, in a good case, the way that the CA does this is that they issue a challenge value to the certificate requester, who then serves it at a particular URL under the claimed domain, and the CA goes and issues a request to that URL and checks that the challenge value is present as expected. So that's the, only the legitimate controller of the domain should be able to serve that challenge value with that URL. This looks good at first glance, but it's actually kind of circular if you look at it more closely. Because the CA is making a request to example.com, but the CA is the one in charge of authenticating requests to example.com. So how does this work? Um, well, the answer is it doesn't really. If you can control the, D the DNS response that the CA gets. You can point the, the CA at the attacker's servers instead of the legitimate ones. Or maybe an attacker can manipulate BGP to reroute traffic to their own servers. These are examples of very well-known, not even particularly sophisticated attacks that can be used to subvert the security of the web PKI, even when the CAs are behaving exactly as they are supposed to. 
Some people even go so far as to call this a delegated trust on first use model, meaning that the security property is really trust on first use. It's just that we're sort of delegating the first use to the CA to do it on behalf of browsers. The point being, not the most impressive security model. Fortunately, there are some improvements to be had. Recently, some CAs have started doing this, this domain validation from multiple global perspectives. And that makes the attack, it means the attacker needs to be more well-resourced, more sophisticated to pull off one of these attacks. There's also rapidly improving adoption of a technology called RPKI, which is used to sign and validate BGP routes and can help prevent BGP hijacking. Certificate transparency, RPKI, multi-perspective domain validation, all these security improvements can take the, long, the, the WebPKI a long way from where it started. However, I want to note, once again, it's not just security that is important, it's agility. Because agility is how we roll out security improvements like this. We can't have security improvements if the, if the WebPKI just stays ancient and ossified. Agility and security, difficult properties to achieve in a system that is nearly fractally complex. Everywhere you look in the web PKI, it's complexity upon complexity. The certificate format, X509, is a constant source of parsing bugs and misimplemented validation logic. Standing up a new CA is this incredibly complicated, multi-year, multi-million dollar endeavor. On the client, just the algorithms that are used to validate our certificate are complex graph algorithms. So these are all sharp edges that suck up a lot of time and energy and attention, and these sharp edges uh, divert resources from improving secur security for users. Let's look at one example, revocation. This is a functionality that it seems quite reasonable to want in a PKI. If a certificate is no longer valid, maybe the corresponding key was compromised, you want to be able to inform clients of that in some way so that they no longer accept the certificate. It turns out that in the web PKI, revocation is just this total mess. There are all these half-baked solutions floating around out there. None of them actually solves the problem, uh, and it just adds enormous complexity for very little gain. To start with, depending on how you count, there are maybe three standardized ways to do revocation in the web PKI. CAs and browsers implement some of them, but not really directly, not as, as they're supposed to, and none of them, none of these standardized mechanisms is actually in wide use on the web today to actually solve the revocation problem. On top of that, browsers, many modern browsers, have their own browser proprietary custom mechanisms for revocation. And meanwhile, CAs are kind of jumping through hoops to implement all these revocation systems, often with arcane requirements. For example, up until late last year, CAs were required to ensure that certain types of certificate revocations could be downloaded in under three seconds on an analog telephone line. So not exactly reflective of the modern web. And I'll also note, CAs are required to disclose their operational and security incidents. And last year, about a third of them, a third of the disclosed incidents, we're related to these revocation mechanisms in a way. So that tells me that these are systems that are expensive to build, expensive to run properly, and for all that, we're not even getting much client security value out of them. So again, I wanna emphasize, clients, web browsers, are not typically directly using the, these certificate revocation mechanisms that CAs run. When they do use them, they often do so in a soft fail way, which brings pretty minimal security value to users. So, all these half-baked solutions, all kind of half-deployed, an awful lot of accumulated cruft and complexity for very little gain. So what can we do about it? Well, first of all, we can obviously remove some outdated requirements like this dial-up modem requirement that I mentioned a minute ago. Maybe more controversially, more dramatically, I would question whether CAs should be required to run these revocation systems at all if they aren't actually being used by web browsers um, who are setting the rules. And, uh, and if they are being used, it's not in a way that's bringing security value to users. But you know, we still need a way to deal with certificates that need to be revoked. We still need to meet the underlying actual security need. And here again, I would come back to automation and agility. Imagine that all certificate issuance and renewal on the web were automated. In that world, we could think about bringing down maximum certificate lifetime really dramatically. 
maybe even as low as seven, 10 days. In that world, by the time you find out a certificate needs to be revoked, by the time you would expect that information to be propagated to clients, the certificate may well have expired naturally anyway. In this world, we might still need some form of revocation for exceptional cases, but the problem becomes dramatically simpler when we, when we expect it only to be used very rarely, which removes some privacy and performance and security constraints. Revocation is a particularly egregious example of fractal complexity in the web PKI. We have bad implementations, onerous requirements, and very, very little actual security value. When I look at this and other examples, like the complex certificate format, the complex graph validation algorithms, I think the theme is that we should be trying to make it so that web PKI clients and, CA and CAs do a small number of things, do them well, and do them for a good reason. Agility, security, simplicity, not always words that one would have associated with the web PKI, but I do think with some dedication and collaboration, they can be. Now that HTTPS adoption is so ubiquitous, it might not be realistic to throw away this system and start over with a new one, but there is a, lot, a long way we can go with incremental improvements to the system that we have. We can remove legacy requirements. We can replace manual processes with automated ones. Um, we can, instead of relying on opaque and cursory security assessments, we can supplement those with transparency and technical enforcement. None of this is easy work, but I do think it will help contribute to a healthier web PKI, which is easier to reason about, easier to secure, and that's what we need for a system that society relies on so fundamentally today. Um, thank you, feel free to contact me on any of these mediums and I'm uh, happy to take any questions. Thanks for listening.